My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. Three artifacts is a positive glut of magic. Yet my hunger only grows. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time she became my muse. And later even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms, until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver 
as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. I'm sorry, but I had to. After all, this is only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. You are as thick as they come, sweetness. This is my personal playhouse, and you don't have an invite. Get out! Oh, the cocky ones are my favorite to chew on. Keep going, Pickle, and you'll find out. What's that? Please. Please. As you edge closer to the mirror, a pale face appears, contorted in fear. Fists slam against the mirror's surface again and again. Don't look. Don't! My sweet Callum, whose beloved asked that his beauty never fade. What is this place? You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through, not again. Images flash. A man cowering, a bag open at his feet. Gold coins spilling onto the floor. His cries for mercy are cut short as the hag slices into him, dismembering him painstakingly, limb by limb. She cackles, 
The man's remaining flesh twisted and contorted, becoming the twisted surface of the door before you. Flee, you feel it cry. A scene appears in your mind. Two paladins and a cleric marching through the door, shrouded in the glow of the divine. Weapons brandished, they charge into the hag's lair. Screams of terror pierce the air. You let them in? Nobody. That's a decade for each. You're mine for 30 more years, Petal. silent. You see the hag. She walks through the door, its form shimmering. The lightest touch of hope brushes your mind as the presence within retreats. Away! Away! Don't a thief who tried to steal from Auntie. Now the good little pet guards my own. No, no, don't look. Mustn't look, mustn't see. I see it. I see what's to come. You realize there's magic at work. Some type of spell. An illusion. Me. Dead. Dead! Flesh rotten, bone shining! No! No! Can't stop! Can't! Gods, don't hurt me! Oh, please! Please! Please, please, please! No! No! Monster! For mind dripping! Flesh peeling! Mind flayer! No! No! Mind flayer! Get away! Get away! No intention Stop. of letting that happen. Please! Please! This poor dear wished never to lay eyes on her family again. Eat 
to find a way forward. You come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair! You petulant bollocks! I'll rip your spine out your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones! I'll bring you back and do it all over again. Just get out of here, please. You want the girl so bad. Boy. Blood follows me everywhere. Happy place. Wait! Oh, wait just a tick! Killing me is a waste of time. I'll find a way to return. Always have, always will. But it's unpleasant. 
So how about we be civilized about this, hmm? I have something you want. If you're gloating now, just wait till you hear my offer, Petal. Let me leave with the girl, and I'll give you power. You want to be stronger, tougher, smarter, done. Anything is possible. Just let me keep the girl and her babe. Not only would this be a vile deal, it would be folly to trust the hag's gifts. It's your choice, sweetness. deserve. Ethel was going to bring my husband back. Back from the dead. And now I'll never see him again. Because of you! She would have! I had everything figured out. Just a bit longer and my child would have been born. And all this... All this would have been over. I do. The baby, too. Auntie Ethel promised to give this child a good life. Teach them magic, even. More than I could have done. I... I think you're right. That's what Ethel always told me. Now I'll have to drag Connor's coffin all the way home. It's the only way this child will ever meet their father. I hope you're happy. <laughs> 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 